I mean, I'm gonna have to get skinny just because like my personality is not getting better. Um, <laughs> I'd like to have sex with hotter men, uh, so I'm on it. I guess my dream body would be like Britney Spears at her worst. So close enough, <laughs> one day I'll get there, I don't know. Well, I've been doing stand-up for about 10 years now and they were looking to do dirty specials and I'm just like, I'm a pretty dirty comic. And so I was just approached, it's really simple. I feel bad <laughs> that some people have to work harder. But yeah, I just, I got approached and I kind of, said no for a little bit because I was like, no, I don't know, I don't know. And then I got the official offer and took that money. I'm very proud. Yeah, they wanted me for sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty filthy and it's exciting. But the only thing they asked is that I do a couple personal jokes that aren't dirty. So I gave them that and I gave them two jokes about being like a Russian person with my family. But I probably wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for them asking. So that was the one thing I did that kind of catered to them in a way. Like with stand-up, I perform every night of the week and I'm just, that's just what I do. So all of this is new material. I just do stand-up. And that was like the set I had been doing and working on. And then when they asked to do the half hour, there was more jokes I had to take out and kind of fit it together. So in that way, I was like piecing what would be the best, most impactful half hour and the order and stuff. But I just like do stand up all the time. Yeah. So it's just, I have, yeah, a lot of material. But then as soon as I taped, I start, I want, I stopped doing that really live. And actually one of the jokes is a super old joke that never made it anywhere. And I was excited that I got to stuff it in here. So there was like a couple oldies. And then of course I really want to talk about what is the chunk of like the second half of your set is yeah. kind of like the climax of it. Yes. You the guys in the audience this question specifically. Where did that come from? And have you been doing that live elsewhere? And what's the response you've been getting to it? Yeah, I mean also like my first album half hour I also talked about coming in a different way about how sex edit sucks because someone asked me like if has my process changed or anything I'm like it's actually humiliating I've been talking about the same things for over like a decade so uh, I don't know how that joke came about at all and how the Q&A part started but it's been a joy and a pleasure to do around town and around the country and you know I've done it at different countries too I did in Australia and stuff but what's been good about doing it on the road is because it's audience participation and a lot of the people think that they're gonna get me you know so anytime someone does get me or they said something wild I was able to catalog everything people said and then put that in my joke to prove them wrong so I would get a lot of answers or like people would argue with me it made me better because then I can uh, make sure that my my point of views are bulletproof um, and then I just know what people are going to say so I got to like come up with quick lines that seem like I'm like this is all brand new but you realize that everyone's pretty much the same everywhere and say the same things. And it's really just shocking to me how much bad sex women are having all the time and how little men care. So often when you're trying to prove that a group of people suck or that they're doing something wrong, they're gonna be on the defensive or they're gonna be like, yeah, prove it, bitch. Or like, I'm not like that. So for me, making the men answer this question, it's like implicating them and proving how shitty they are as people and at having sex and caring about women because of their answers. And I'm really clear after the joke also, before I even get into it, to be like, are you sure there's no more answers? I wanna make sure everyone feels represented and you're not gonna like, you know, so I make sure that they have nothing else to add. And it's just, it, it's a, it was a joy and a pleasure and I'm probably not gonna be able to do that joke live anymore but it was like a great couple of years doing it and it really made my day and I I loved it and it's one of my favorite things I've done and one person on Twitter screenshotted um the show and the the women in the front row are like cackling and all the men around them arms folded staring at me and it's because they implicate like they they know and then they know they have to fuck their girlfriends better that night. <laughs> Hard, whatever. My life's good. I don't even know why I'm complaining. My life is pretty magic. All I do all day long is craft and masturbate. It's amazing. It's <laughs> such a good life. And it's a lot of glitter in your bush, but it's worth it, you know? <laughs> you look at all the collages and you're like, that's all right. <laughs>